tiny but super informal community. Okay. So, yeah. um, well, I'm always asked to um, share with with the audience my story most of the time of how I I am um, actually touched by the fact that I am a life insurance policy holder. And I am a very willing speaker regarding that because I'm very passionate about anything that makes life easy and makes life um, more livable. I am very passionate about help, uh, teaching others how to get on the you know the bandwagon and and join me and on. So um, in line with that um, I always see positively because so even with the death of Francis so What's done is done. It's already there, so there's nothing I can do about that. So, of course, I have to take care of the living, which is my family and, of course, myself. You know. So, um, in the first place, when we um, that's why um, earlier was mentioned by Tara, I'm almost 20 years policy old. I think now more than 20 years because um, if I remember right, when we first got our policies, we knew nothing about it. It was just that. Um, I am um, like I really follow advice of people who know who know things before me who, who are like um, more um, knowledgeable about life itself because I think automatically that happened to me when I became a mom. So I'm I'm just saying that I'm lucky that I'm the type of person who's like that who thinks that way. So I'm just you know when I look around and when I see other people, but I'm, there's no not many people who are like that. So I actually told that if they wanted me to talk to their agents, because when they gave me now my check, um, I said I I didn't I only saw the beauty of how life insurance works at that moment. And in our industry, parang we actually know what everybody's got, diba? So parang um, when even before that, when I was really aware of buying all these things, I would sometimes make the, the agent collector come come to me on the set when I go with my daughters or with Francis, ganyan. So when they see that, parang they say like, what is that? And like none of them, a lot of them are not policy holders. So parang they think that it's like taboo to actually talk about life insurance because parang it's um, a bad thing, because it's parang sad, though, it's depressing. That's what we call, I don't see it that way at all. So um, at the same time, like everybody asks me, how can I, how come I deal with um, Francis's death it's in a certain way? Na, no, um, I guess it's the whole, it's my whole thinking, it's my whole, um, the, the whole way that I deal with life itself. So, parang, when something comes to to me, it's it's. I always think that I'm glad that I did something to prevent, to actually prevent like a crisis from happening instead of waiting for it to happen. So it's not that I'm saying that I think superior compared to the next person. It's just that I think I think more practical. So I would like to encourage more people not to think this way because this way you get uh, to enjoy life more, you get to be with your family more, spend more time on the things that really matter, diba? Right? So if, if um, your finances are taken care of by people who really know what to do with them, just like me, Karen, like that, when the first time the agent came to me and explained all these things, and even up to now, I don't understand actually a word <laughs> of what she's saying, but I do know that I'm protected, so anything that's gonna protect me, and like, diva, right? like, um, nothing really bad was really happening to us. So when this thing happened, it, can you imagine losing your best friend, your life partner, your a person that you plan to grow old with? Oh, I'm yak na daw ako, di ba? May naiyak ako. Pero actually, kasi like, kanya, when we see old couples, kanya, sasabihin namin, oh, tayo yan, no, pag, ano, years from now. Siyempre, parang, ganun yung plan namin, di ba? So parang, you think you're invisible when you're young. And ganun talaga. And, when, and kami, we always think young, actually, in France. So even when, when he uh, died last year, um, I'm thinking for the is kung ano yung sa inside naman, which is forever young, di ba? Pero yun nga, you can't you can't mess with the, oh, fate, di ba? So that was what, as he said, that was the card dealt him. So we, he just had to play it. But our real plans were, of course, to be like to get rid of all the kids <laughs> and then go back to enjoying life, na kami dalawa lang together, di ba? But of course, that's not to happen anymore. But yun nga, so. I'm just so glad that I actually did this because I listened to my mom. So that's one thing. And I don't think a lot of people have families that way or like they, you know, it's very
very taboo dito sa atin, sa culture natin, to talk about that. Whereas sa amin, we're very um, upfront about everything na we say what's on our minds. And it's just the way that we say it to each other. That it sounds like it's really it's because you're caring. It's not, you're, you're taking, you don't take offense because of the way it's said to you. So, in, in line with that, I also do the same thing with my children. So, it's, as it was mentioned earlier, I already have two grandchildren because my eldest daughter is married with two children and she's 26. So, when she started, her eldest is three years old. So, when, even before she had children, when she first got her job, so she was excited and her paycheck and all. And she ever find, it's supposed to be symbolic, diba, that you turn over your first paycheck, that would be your parents, and yan. And parang ako, okay lang, you, she, she offered it yan. But I said, no, you, I think you should put it in something that's gonna be, um, I wanna see what you're gonna do with it. And you know naman, diba, what's important to us. Cause I mean, like, my thing is, um, as much as possible, parang pag may apply ka ng visa, diba, they want to see, parang, that you're not gonna be a burden to their society, diba. So parang ganon, that's the way I bring up my children na, don't be a burden to others. So, in the same way, na parang, di ba, parang I got so much help, for the support and all for Francis hospitalization, of course, from our from our employers. But we were just lucky talaga to have that. But after that, what happens, di ba, syempre, wala na siya. It doesn't exist anymore. Alam na namang umasa pa ako sa, di ba, sa, sa ibang tao na they're just gonna give her hand out sa so galit na ako sa, that the whole life's gonna be negative. So, that's what I, that is more of what my advocacies are. It's like empowering yourself, taking your life in your hands, trying to find out what you can do to prevent um, bad, bad things from happening, from you avoid these things. So when you're prepared, you're armed, then everything turns out better you know, for the best. So at least you have more time not to concentrate on things that matter to you. So I would like you also to help us, Sana, in, in our drive to make people more aware and um, in line with this also because I got celebrated, of course, with Francis' death, the time that I, I began all these advocacy because in line with also Francis now, which is his ideals about the Filipino. So I wish really that we could do more so to support his dream for how the Filipino should be, it should be like not blaming the government, taking their lives in in their own with their own responsibility for themselves, diba? So that they sa sa kanya kanya naman ano, magkakapulong tayo with each other. So I think always that the family is the most important unit. So each person has to do this uh, job to work towards a better nation, diba? So it's, it sounds like a big dream, but if you dissect it to the one, down to the one person, which is yourself, then if you just take care of yourself, you're not going to be a burden to anyone, diba? And um, if I may mention, on March 6th, it's going to be his first year gone. And I'd like to thank you also for being here today and for celebrating this time with us. Thank you, thank you.